primary day, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, Stein just opened up the newspaper reading a little bit about primary day. And listen, I uh, think it's fair to say that there are some people that are not expected to win. But as you know, there was a sex scandal. And there was a sex sc scandal involving a local politician here in Las Vegas. Stein, would you like to just fill people in a little bit on this sex scandal and how it could affect everything that's going on as far as voting and the primaries today and all, all that stuff? I mean, you're talking about District 4. Correct. Con Congressional District 4. This is the primary. So you got the Republican side. Uh, we don't really, and that's kind of, I don't know if you do polling on the Republican side, but, but you know, I think certainly Lisa Song Sutton's got to be lead, leading maybe. Or, uh, or Sam scandal. Peters. No, I'm just I'm giving yeah. some context. Now, what you're talking about is that on the Democrats, the, the, whoever wins this Republican primary is going to go up against Stephen Horsford. He is the incumbent congressman in District 4. And the sex scandal— It seems to me that the only the, person that was doing polling there was his mistress. <laughs> yeah. Love Jones. Yeah. So we talked about this, what, about a, a month ago. And Horsford apparently had has had a on and off affair for a decade with a woman who goes by the name of Love Jones, and she went on a she's a, a prominent podcast a podcast that she she well, created, I don't know about prominent which <laughs> probably had, well it might be now she had probably no, zero not. listeners, and then when she went on and confessed she has to more having, listeners than Wayne Allen Root when she when she went on to con and confessed to having an, an affair with uh, Stephen Horsford. What'd she call him at first? It was John. It was he had a different uh, name. Was it Bobby? Robert. Bob, Robert. Robert. Yeah, Bob, Bob Robert. or Robert. Robert. Yeah, Robert. Yeah, Robert. Something like that. Them, yeah. And then she eventually broke the news that okay, it's Stephen Horsford. And so anyway, they had this on and off affair for ten years and included uh, rough sex. Apparently, uh, Horsford really likes rough sex, and she grew to enjoy it as well. What did they say? They had so, sex first, then sushi. And then there was another. Yeah, there was another tidbit where she talks about <laughs> that one night they had a date night, and then he brought over sushi, but they ended up having sex before the sushi, or something like that. But anyway, so Horsford, he's the incumbent, and he's probably we had one of his opponents on, and I think he's probably, despite the the, the sex scandal, probably gonna gonna coast in the Democratic Party uh, primary. But again, as I said, he's he's got going to face in November one of these whoever emerges on the Republican side. So as far as District Four goes, we've had some people in studio. We have Jim Marchand in studio. We had Sam Peters in studio. Lisa Song Sutton. Uh, I publicly said that I support Lisa Song Sutton, and the reason why I said that uh, is sim it's pretty simple. I mean, she has several successful businesses that she's run from the ground up. She's a very successful woman. Uh, and she's accomplished a lot. She knows what it's like to, to be a success in this city, uh, other than the fact that she was a former Miss Nevada, which is kind of cool in itself. But I think she's an ex I, I got a chance to get to know her. She's an extremely smart person, uh, very well-spoken. And she's fair. I, I think she's more in the middle than anything else. I don't think she's an extreme right. I think she's very fair when it comes to certain issues. Uh, another person that I actually have respect for that came in studio was Sam Peters. Uh, I think he, even though he is uh, pro-life, he was willing to say, you know what, if someone gets an abortion by the fourth month, I would be more inclined to be okay with that. Sam's very reasonable. Well, I, yes, I think yeah. that's the He's, best word. To Sam brought us donuts, he did he did, us donuts. which goes a very long he, way. He has an extensive career in the Air Force. Yep. But I'm going to go on the air, and I'm going to say this person to me is a coward. His name is Jim Marchant. He comes into our studio. He fails to answer any questions. He just honestly. wasn't very prepared, Brian. I don't think he's a coward. Uh, when you when you can't take a side on any issue, well, and, and you say, "Well, that could be true, but we don't yeah, know." Every every answer was was circular logic. Well, every listen, single answer he had was circular listen, logic. If that guy wins, it's a disgrace, as far I, as I'm I, concerned. I'm fairly confident that Jim Marchand is not going to win District Four. I mean, that was one of the. I've listen in 20 years of doing this. I've interviewed probably a thousand politicians in my life. That was one of the most ill-prepared, idiotic interviews I've ever done with a politician. It was unbelievable. The guy wouldn't answer anything directly. And then he has somebody call. I think we had some callers that called up. And one said, didn't you call all Democrats demons or something? And then he, 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 just, he just, like, froze. He wouldn't answer. And, and you know, no, this, this was the guy who said uh, his, all his answers were basically, I don't know, I wasn't there. Right, I don't exactly. know, I wasn't yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't there. It's how, ridiculous. How, how could you know if you weren't there? Yeah, exactly. That, that was well, his answer. Well, we were asking for his opinion. His right. opinion on right. You're his running for office. You have yeah. to have an opinion. Like, for example. Did you know. Were you there? For example, no, yeah. that, that, Sam that was, Peters. <laughs> that was kind of his argument, Sam, which, again, is circular life. When I asked Sam Peters all those questions, he answered them. Didn't mean I agreed with everything, but he answered them. Same thing with Lisa Sutton. They didn't back down. They answered the questions to the best of their ability, and I respect them for that.
for that. I don't respect any politician that dodges questions. The guy dodged everything. And by the way, he, what Republican would vote for this guy? He got outed by a Democrat. He lost his seat and he didn't pass anything. Why would you vote for somebody like that? You say, well, I have experience. Experience doing what? Walking and chewing gum at the same time? I don't even know if he can do that. He had a pretty big endorsement, too. Who, somebody endorsed him. Well, there are other uh, there are other people in District 4 that have some pretty what, big endorsements. Kevin McCarthy? I, I have no idea. I don't know. Scott Peterson? He, he had a, no, it wasn't Scott Peterson. Oh, okay. No. Just checking. Lisa so, got Gavin Newsom, or Gavin Maloof, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's true. Well, yeah, she does, she well. doesn't just have Gavin yeah. Maloof. She's got a lot of other... Pretty strong. Dan, Dan Crenshaw. Yeah, Dan Crenshaw's yeah. a big one. That guy's pretty well respected. He's yeah. a, for, for those who don't know Dan Crenshaw, he's the uh, Republican congressman who has an eye patch. Who was the guy that said he looked like a porn star? Uh, Pete Davidson. Pete Davidson, yeah. Yeah, he's th- that's cool. right. He said, yeah. <laughs> that's right. And then, But then they made up. They made up. There was a whole thing about that, but then everything was cool. Well, listen, anybody that represents their country honorably and, and, and serves this country honorably, injured or not, is a hero as far as I'm concerned. I don't agree with a lot of Den Crenshaw, a lot of what he says. I don't agree with his politics. I don't agree with how he seems to be a Donald Trump defender. I don't like that about him, but he's still respected, and he's a hero. Um, you, know, if, you know, if somebody – imagine if Barack Obama or a Democrat said, I don't, I don't respect Dan Crenshaw because he lost his eye. I mean, really, that's what Donald Trump did with John McCain. I don't respect John McCain because he was captured, but no, no reasonable person would say that about Dan Crenshaw. I don't agree with any of his politics, but I, he's a hero. He served this country honorably as a hero. John McCain was a hero. Do we understand the difference here, folks? Do we even have to and say he looks, it? He looks cool. He looks like a pirate. <laughs> well, <laughs> as, uh, as Kramer said in, in Seinfeld, I want to be a pirate. <laughs> well, Congresswoman Stefanik also... Uh, is supporting uh, Lisa Song Sutton, so that's important. All right, so I'll make my prediction on District 4. Here we go. I'm ready, Brian. I actually think that Lisa Song Sutton's going to win. I think Sam Cedars is going to win. So we both agree that Jim uh, Jim no, Marchant. No, I, I, I don't believe that Jim Thank Marchant you. has has much of a chance of winning. You'd be surprised. Well, t- typically, uh, maybe he could. I, I know he I know he has deep pockets. Typically, I'm sure he's got some connections with some deep yeah, pockets. Keep in mind, he always brags about his A plus rating with he, the NRA. It does That's very important which, to him. Uh, you know, actually, right now that is important because with what's happening, if if the, if the police does get defunded all over the country. Membership in the NRA is going to go up by about fifty or sixty percent. There is zero percent chance. Brian, that Brian that's right, right now, gun sales are soaring across the country. By the way, there is prices zero. are going up as well, well because, because there because is the zero, massive demand. Zero percent chance that police are going to be defunded across the country. It's not going to happen. And for those people well, out I, there, I'm saying, but people are afraid right, of it. Okay, well, and listen. since they're afraid of it, they'll make, okay, they'll well, act. And I mean, people, I've actually considered purchasing a couple of guns myself. The people that I know, are, going the people right that I know that I hang out with on a regular basis, are not afraid of it, not buying guns. And I will also say. This. Those, Chris Wynn? those people that brag about an A plus rating of the NRA are usually those that have no answers when it comes to gun violence and 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 shootings throughout the country. They have no answers. Their only response is more guns, more guns. I don't want to hear from people like that because I think that those are the people that should not be uh, in office representing us. I don't care what your grade is with the NRA, just as much as I care what the grade was you got for for coloring when you were in kindergarten. I don't care well, what your grade you know, was because those two are so associated. Primaries, they, they they call it a purity test in primaries, and it tends to skew to the, the, the primaries tend to favor the one who's the most conservative or the most liberal in a primary. And so by that logic, I would go with Jim Marchand because way, he is going to get the backing of the party faithful. Guess what? I've got some uh, news I heard from one of our listeners, Marge, who just sent me a message and said, guess who Jim Marchand is being backed by? Wayne Allen Root. Well, there you go. Well, what it's valuable shocker. airtime. He goes on Wayne Allen Root. He gets a free commercial. He goes on other shows. He gets a free commercial. Yeah, there you go. And it's all about name recognition and stuff. So I guess so. Boy, it's going to be well, interesting. Well, you know, I, I can't blame him for making the rounds, though. I would do the exact same thing if I was in his position. I, I know I, I would answer more questions. For more, the record, we have more not, eloquently than he would. For the I record, would be more prepared. unlike some other shows. We haven't accepted any money from our politicians here in Vegas. We've given all of them an opportunity to come on. There are other shows that you might listen to that actually charge these candidates to come on. And when they charge them to come on, they say, I support this guy. Wow, that's really courageous.